Hello, fit like ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and abdi else out there that's listening. My name is Pauline Cordner and I'm a storyteller from the northeast of Scotland. Now today I have got a story that I would like to dedicate for all of the children at Cave Hill Primary in Aberdeen and also for the Tag Team Tales crew. Now, it's the time of year when children, specifically around about primary one, two, three age, are learning about plants and growing and they're also learning about nature and all that kind of thing. So I would like to introduce to you Buzzy the Bee. Um, and I saw Buzzy the Bee lying around here. Yeah, Buzzy, that, that way. That way, look, 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 look. Right, Buzzy, right. He's not the brightest of bees. He's like the bee in my story. And I saw him lying around this morning and I thought, that's what story I'm going to tell you today. Now, long, long, long ago, there was a king and this king was the wisest king that ever walked the earth. Some of you might have heard of him. I might tell you his name at the end of the story. Well, this king, he was so rich that he had this beautiful palace. And he lived in a hot country, so he had great big gardens and in the gardens were palm trees and flowers, flowers of every colour and every size and every scent. And he used to like to lie out in the garden surrounded by fruit trees and great beauty. And his servants would come and he would be lying out there next to the pond where mayflies and dragonflies buzzed around by the lily flowers and the lily pads and they would bring him nice things to drink they would peel him grapes and they would shelter him from the sun and keep him cool by wafting him by great palm leaves and he just loved his garden now in the king's garden there was this young bee now it wasn't Buzzy. I think it was one of Buzzy's ancestors. It was Billy the Bee. And as you can see, Billy the Bee is just a little bit, well, a wee bit short-sighted. But Billy the Bee does his best. And on that day, Billy the Bee was in the king's garden and he was buzzing around and he was looking for something. He was looking for, that's right, a flower so that he could drink the nectar and take it back home off to the hive where it would end up as honey. Now as he was looking around he could smell something oh wonderful something that smelt like the most beautiful flower he had ever smelt. Thing is when kings lie out in the sun they get a bit sweaty and a bit smelly so servants would spray him with perfume and what the bee could smell was the king himself and he came along and he looked around but because he had very bad eyesight the only thing that he could see was the king's big red sunburnt nose and he thought it was the most beautiful big pinky reddy kind of flower that he'd ever seen and he flew towards it and he was about to land on the king's nose when the king saw the bee now there are two types of people in this world. There are people like me, I'm one of these, when a bee approaches, they just freeze. If you stay still, you'll be fine. And the bee will crawl quite happily all over my face. And then there's the kind of people that go, ah, bee, and they'll go running off and create a great big fuss. The king was number two. The bee came closer and closer to his nose. And it landed on his nose and the king yelled, Bee! And poor little Billy the bee, who was very sensitive hearing, turned around to fly away and doink, ah! stung the bee on the nose and the king, ah! my nose! And immediately the wise women came rushing towards the king. Oh, you need to put some vinegar on that, said one. Oh, no, 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 he doesn't need to put vinegar on it. No, no, it needs to be bicarbonate of soda. I think you should just put some wine on it, said the third. But the king, oh, he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to ban all the bees. Oh, your majesty, you can't do that, said the first wise woman. Oh, no, you can't do that. Either. No, no, no. Uh, you can't do that because you know what? If you ban all the bees... There'll be no honey. 
Oh, much more than that. There won't just be no honey. They won't put pollen. They won't spread the pollen. There won't be there won't be any any fruits, any flower, any wheat. Said the second. The second. I don't care," said the king. "I am going to ban all bees from my kingdom." And he took the children out of school and he lined the borders of his kingdom with children with nets. And every time a bee came along, they would be caught and told to leave the kingdom. Oh, you can imagine what happened. After a year, well, the king had clearly run out of honey. He woke up one morning and he said, I, 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 honey on toast for breakfast, please. Honey on toast. But there was no honey to be had. And then another year passed and, well, the, the fruits weren't growing on the trees because the flowers hadn't been fertilised by the pea, bees spreading the pollen and the king started to think, I've made a very big mistake. People in my country are, are starving. I will welcome the bees back. Now, this king was a very clever king and he could talk to animals. And he said, call them to me. All the bees are welcome back into my country if they will come. And I will apologise to them, but I want them all to come to my garden. And the next morning he woke up and his garden was buzzing. There were so many of them carpeting the whole place. And he came out and he said, bees, I am sorry. I am so sorry. I was a foolish king and I have learned. But is the bee that stung me on the nose here right now? And in the audience of bees, Billy the bee was looking very worried indeed. And his friends were all nudging him going, Billy, Billy. Well, luckily his eyesight had improved with age and he rose up and he flew and he landed on the king's hand and the king said, are you the bee who stung me? Yes, said Billy the bee. Right, why did you sting me? Oh, the thing is, said the bee, that your nose was so big and beautiful, just a huge, great big, gigantic red nose. The king felt a bit insulted and you smelled like a beautiful flower. I thought you were a flower, your majesty, the biggest and most beautiful flower of all. And then you screamed, bee! And I got a little scared and I flew away and stung you by mistake. I'm so sorry, your majesty. Do you know one day I will save your life and your kingdom? And the king, <laughs> he was 13 with that. He tossed back his head and he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. A tiny little creature like you is going to save me. <laughs> Be off with you, he said. <sighs> and he settled back in his garden, in the shade, being fun with the palm leaves. And off went Billy the Bee. Now, some years passed and a queen came to the kingdom. She was from a land where there had always been war. Her father had died and she saw this as an opportunity now that she was queen to make peace with the king's country. She had heard of how wise he was, of all the famous decisions that he had made, of how his people would come to him to help end their wars and their arguments. So she came prepared with a thousand questions. She also came with camels laden with gold and silver and jewels and spices and herbs and beautiful, beautiful silks from her own land. And she said to the king, I will ask you a thousand questions. If it is true what they say, if you are as clever as I have been led to believe you are, there will be peace between our lands forever, but get one wrong and the war will remain. So the king knew it was in his interests to encourage peace. And he answered the questions one by one. Questions about geography, about history, about philosophy, about mankind, about humankind. The 999th question was very difficult and it puzzled him a lot. She brought to him six identical children. 
She said three are boys, three are girls. How can you tell without going too far, your majesty, without touching them, without getting any closer? How can you tell which are the boys and which are the girls? And he looked at them and they were all dressed identical on little white tunics with little white shoes. And their hair, it was all cut identical. And he looked at them and he couldn't make up his mind which was which and then he had an idea he thought about his own children and he had brought forward some bowls of water and some soap and he asked them to wash their hands now this was pre-coronavirus and uh, what happened then was that the girls rolled up their sleeves and started to wash their hands Whereas the boys just got in there and, and got all sort of dubby and soapy. <laughs> and he said, those are the boys, those are the girls. Well done, said the Queen. And for my last question, she clapped her hands and in came four servants. And those four servants each held a pillow. And on that pillow, there was the most beautiful flower. Four pillows, four flowers. She said, in my country... We make silk. The silk is so fine and so beautiful that the flowers which we make from them cannot be distinguished from real flowers. You, your majesty, are to tell me which of these is the real flower. And he looked at them. He thought that would be easy because you, you know when you go somewhere and there's a fake plant and you, you kind of reach out to touch it. He reached out and no, she said, you're not allowed to touch. You're not allowed to taste. And he thought to himself, what other senses do I have? Well, I can see. And he looked, they all looked the same. They were all perfect. And then he thought, I can smell. And he got up and... <laughs> he sniffed all the flowers, but she'd sprayed them with perfume. So they all smelled the same. And he couldn't think of any other way of telling the difference when he heard a sort of bang, bang, banging. Very gentle, very soft thudding bang at the shutters to the palace. And he asked his servant to open and in flew a bee. And the king smiled. And the bee flew to the first flower, to the second, to the third, and to the fourth. And then back to the second. And the king said, my friend, the bee, has told me that the second flower is the real one. And the queen smiled and she said, your majesty, you're correct. There will be peace between our countries forevermore. And she came forward to shake his hand. And he said, no, I, I, I did think I was the cleverest of kings. But now I realise two things. She said, what could that possibly be? I've never met a man or a woman or even a child who could talk to animals yet. I've just seen it. Surely you are the cleverest person on earth. He said, no, no. I've learned two things. First of all, that even the smallest of creatures can help the most mighty and powerful rulers. And she smiled and she said, what's the second? And he said, nobody knows everything and that is the story of the king and the bee and some of you might know that the story is of king solomon and of course the queen that comes to visit is the queen of sheba and it's one of my favorites to tell at this time of the year um i've not spotted any bees yet but um if anybody has uh let me know and if you have any bee stories of your own just send us a message uh, in the comments down below. Well, take care everyone, stay safe, stay indoors, and I'll see you all with a new story soon.